Hi everyone, Mrs. Dial here, I'm bringing you our telelearning update number two. Our telelearning update number one was sent out on Sunday and we're trying to be consistent with how we're labeling information that's coming to you because I know it's a lot of information coming to you. Um, there's a lot of information coming to us right now too, so we're trying to be um, organized and thoughtful in the way we're delivering it. So this is telelearning update number two. We're sending this to you as a video today to walk through the foundational plan for what our telelearning will look like for our warriors and our teachers over the next few weeks. Um, the teachers and I are all getting really used to trying to see ourselves on video. We're swallowing our pride and um, we know that it's important for us to see one another during this time. So that is why I'm trying to do this video this way and hopefully it will help explain things a little bit more as well. Um, today in my house, it's March 24th, we're celebrating my son's 17th birthday and tomorrow we'll be celebrating my daughter's 18th birthday. So kind of a weird time to be um, celebrating <laughs> during a pandemic and my daughter who's a senior um, has a lot of changes that she's, you know, going through and things that she's giving up in her senior year as well due to this. So I know like me, all of you were experiencing this in a variety of different ways. And, um, I just really appreciate all the ways that you have shown care for us and for one another over the last few weeks. Um, so many people have reached out to ask how they can help and just to give words of encouragement and um, great positive attitudes and belief in our school and in our leadership and in our teachers. And I just can't thank you enough for that. Um, so I am going to go into um, a presentation that I went through with the teachers yesterday. I've changed it to be more relevant for parents and students, but the teachers and I all met in small groups yesterday through um, Google Meet, which is is how you'll be meeting with your teachers as well some so you'll get some live face-to-face -face interaction and you'll get to see your friends that way too some um, so we went through this plan yesterday and I just can't tell you how proud I am of our teachers for um, taking on this new adventure with the best attitude that they can um, make no mistake our teachers want to be in school with our kids they have a heart for people, they're relational, they're social people, and they want to be here with you. But they are definitely determined to um, make this the most positive experience for our warriors that, that they can. So I am going to share my screen with you. I hope. Yes. Um, to go through this um, parent information for telelearning. One thing we want to remember is that why our school is a while our school is a place that we love and we love to be here and it's a happy place. Education is not a place. Um, schools have changed throughout the centuries from a one room schoolhouse to what we have now um, to virtual learning that was happening before this. And now um, we're in this time for the next few weeks of telelearning. But education is active and it can be done in a lot of different ways. So we are just shifting our learning from the four walls of our classroom to a digital format, but our support will not go away. Our um, love for our students does not go away. Relationships do not go away. And um, we have a strong school culture. Um, we're a family, we're a community, we're a team. And we were those things before this happened. And I'm so thankful for that because we didn't know how much we would need that culture um, to get us through this. Um, so I'm thankful that that was in place before we even needed it. Two words have really guided our plan over the last few weeks as we've worked. And those words are care and try. Above all, everything that we have done has been to um, make sure that our warriors know we care about them, we care about one another. We've put a lot of thought and care into the plan. We don't wanna overwhelm our teachers. We don't wanna overwhelm our students. And parents, we don't wanna overwhelm you. We know that you're gonna play a key role. We know there's gonna be a burden placed upon you and we have tried to put a lot of um, thought and care into, into our plan with all those people in mind. Our other key word is try. Um, we're gonna try every day to get better. We are not gonna be perfect. 
Um, but we are going to keep trying. And we ask parents and students that you try at home as well. We know that we're going to make mistakes and we may put something in the wrong place or miss something, but we're going to give you a lot of grace and patience and flexibility. Um, and we just ask in return that you try and that you give um, a great and earnest effort. So we have a few different learning platforms that we'll be using because um, we want to do what's age appropriate for our students. So students in grades kindergarten and first will look to Jupiter grades each day for their daily learning assignments. And that will either be in the form of a checklist um, where everything's all in one place, or it will be a link to a Google slide where they can see all their assignments for the day. But our goal is to make everything um, seamless and easy and all in one place. So for kindergarten and first grade, access to Jupyter grades um, through parents, email, and access should be the first place that they look each day. For second through eighth graders, they will be utilizing Google Classroom, and we'll be making sure that all parents and students get those username and passwords for Google Classroom. Um, and for Jupiter grades as well. So we just wanna make everything as easy as possible. But um, second through eighth graders will have what's called an e-learning day template that's posted each day. And that's where their daily checklist and, and learning expectations will be. So for second through eighth grade, Google Classroom should be considered their home base for the day. For communication with parents, we will be using email um, remind Jupiter will be using social media quite a bit as well. So if you don't follow our Facebook um, Imagine South Lake Charter page, I would encourage you to. We also try to do some interactive and fun things there and post ideas for virtual field trips or fun things that you can be doing with your family. Um, but make sure that you are keeping up to date with us on um, Jupiter email and remind students in grades two through eight may also be getting feedback and communication through Google Classroom. So um, they'll wanna be checking that daily as well um, on the weekdays. All of our teachers will be offering an opportunity for one daily video conference using Google Meets. And those conferences we're gonna to keep to 20 minutes or less, um, but we're gonna stagger the time so that teachers are on at different times, hopefully to try to meet everybody's um, needs as I know your schedules are gonna be different with people working and who's watching this, the kids and uh, who can help with schoolwork. So we're gonna try to vary those schedules um, so that they're publishing their times um, a, a week in advance so that you know when the teachers will be on Google Meet. And we want everybody to try to be able to participate as often as possible because it is good for them to see their friends, to interact, to interact with their teacher. Um, it just, it makes you feel good whenever you haven't seen someone and we didn't know we weren't gonna see each other. So um, we do want you to try to make that a priority for kids to log in um, to Google Meets at every opportunity that they can. Um, it is not a requirement because we know that every day um, things may be changing in your household. And if you're um, a first responder working in the healthcare industry, working at a grocery store and things that are really helping to keep our society moving right now, we know your schedules are busy. We know if you're caring for your parents um, or, or elderly people or if someone gets sick in your house, that things are going to be changing. Um, but we do ask that you try to make this a priority as many times as you can. If teachers will be sending you their weekly schedule of when their times are for Google Meet, and there will be a link with that on the daily checklist that is provided to students. So it should be pretty easy to access. I know that teachers are going to be reaching out this week to try to practice some, um, and they just want to see our kids' faces. So they're excited to be trying that this week. Each time kids get on, they'll have some Google Meet norms. We're gonna ask students to be prepared and be on time for the face-to-face -face videos. 
um, dress appropriately, like it, what would be appropriate for a school dress down day. You do not have to wear your uniform, but you should not be wearing pajamas. Um, we'll ask your microphones to be muted unless it's your turn to talk to help minimize background and um, noise. Use headphones if you have them. Be an active participant. Don't be multitasking. Don't be on Google Meets, but also playing a video game or on your phone. Um, be focused and pay attention. Um, we're going to ask that participants do not mute one another, that they don't kick anybody out of the meet, and that they don't share their screen unless the teacher asks them to. And we want to keep these meets very positive. Um, I would emphasize that these Google Meet times are video conferencing for students and, and teachers. And while we know that our younger students may need some help logging on, um, we encourage parents to let students have this time with, with their classmates and their teachers. These are not parent conferences or times for parents to interact with one another or to interact with the teacher. These Google Meet times for video conferencing each day are reserved for student and teacher interactions. We are trying to take the approach of quality over quantity. We are not trying to deliver a big long list of things for students to do every day. Um, we will not exceed three lessons a day. So students will receive two core content lessons each day and one specials or elective class a day. Um, and the lesson links and the student output time for now, we are keeping kindergarten and first grade to be about 15 minutes per activity. So they would have three assignments a day. Um, second and third would be about 30 minutes per activity and fourth through eighth will be about 45 minutes per activity. That is how we're going to begin and we'll see how it goes. If students feel overwhelmed or they're not able to complete things, we will pull back. Um, if, we're, if we're running along and clicking smoothly, then we may be um, putting out information to you in the coming weeks that we're going to increase those times. But we are just going to start off slow. We think those are reasonable expectations, um, but we are going to be flexible. And, and see how our students and parents and teachers do with those times. But that's the expected time for now. So that's um, the per activity is um, per subject. So it's not per day, it's per subject. And they'll have three subjects a day. For kindergarten through fifth grade, they'll be getting reading and social studies work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and math and science work Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then you can see here what special area they'll get. They'll get PE twice a week. They'll get art once a week, music once a week, and STEM once a week. And our STEM lessons will be a little bit more heavily focused on math because we're only delivering math instruction right now two days a week. Um, so that's how we're going to kind of make up for that. But our teachers will be collaborating together. So you won't get information from a bunch of different places. It will all be sent to you together, either in that Jupyter email for KN1 or in the eLearning Day template on Google Classroom for two through eight. Our teachers will be doing the collaborating to put things together for you. So everything will be all in one place. Middle school will be receiving reading and social studies and art on Mondays and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they'll get math and science and PE. So yes, even if you're not enrolled in PE and even if you're not enrolled in art right now, um, we're taking the approach that we need to be well-rounded and in, in delivering content to you. And so everyone will be getting both of those um, two days a week. On Fridays, uh, Mrs. Chubb will be sending out some life skills lessons. There's a lot of opportunity for our middle school students to be um, creating firsthand accounts and primary source documents for what's happening um, in these unprecedented times that we're living in right now. They'll be looking at the supply and demand chain. They'll be looking at budgeting skills and financial things. Um, so that's what the life skills lessons will look like. They'll also receive a STEM challenge on Fridays. That is optional. And it may be something that is um, two weeks at a time that they can work on. Students who do participate and um, post back to Mrs. Chubb through Google Classroom will be entered in a drawing for a gift card for our middle school. So we're encouraging them to do that. If you're enrolled in Spanish 1, which is a high school credit course, you'll get your coursework on Friday to be working on independently for the week. And then that will also be a day for you to be communicating with your core content teachers and doing any catch-up work for other courses that you fall behind on during the week. 
And we'll say it again, our goal is to provide quality over quantity. Our guiding rule will not be how much we are giving you, but how good and how much value it's adding to our kids' education as they work from home. What are we going to teach? Well, we're going to start with review activities. We want to begin with things that we know students can be successful on, so we're building confidence for you, for the, for the kids, and for our teachers. Um, we, so we're going to be trying to start with things that most students should be able to do independently. As our students and teachers and parents get comfortable with the platforms we're using and with online learning, we will be gently rolling out new content and standards, but we won't be starting with a bunch of new things. We'll be starting with review and getting our kids back into the groove of what school is, which will give you a time at home to kind of get into a pattern and a routine of what does this look like in your house? And it'll look different in every house, and that is okay. We will be working to provide lots of positive and encouraging feedback to um, our warriors, and I'll be working to do that, the leadership team and I, to the teachers, and we want to do that for you too, parents. We want to keep encouraging you. Um, we really, really value your partnership and appreciate the positive attitude that you have had. A lot of you have said, hey, we're ready. We're excited. We, we are the, our kids' first teacher. We know that, so we're ready for this challenge. Um, we know others of you are a little bit more reserved because there may be a lot of things happening in your house. So um, just know that we are here to work with you. Office hours. The expectation for all teachers is they have, for now, one three-hour block per day of office hours. And what that means is that during that three-hour block, we're asking teachers to be instantly available to students and parents for questions and answers um, or for anything that comes up. So we're saying you can use the Remind to contact teachers during that time. You can email, use Jupyter Grades. There may be um, some times where they're asking a couple kids to get on and do some video chats in addition to the 20 minute Google Meet that's required each day. Um, but teachers will try to respond during that three hour block within 30 minutes of when you contact them. And they'll be working to vary their three hour blocks each day. So again, trying to make sure that we're accommodating all of the different schedules that families have right now. So they may have a nine to 12 block one day, one day it may be 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And they'll publish their office hours a week in advance to you in an email and then each day in that daily checklist that you receive for what students are doing um, their office hours will be listed as well so those should not be hard for you to find and to know um, for each teacher we are taking the stance right now that grades given during this time can only help students, that they cannot hurt their overall academic standing. So we'll be looking for students to show authentic um, understanding of things through self-reflection, rubrics. We may have personal phone calls to have them explain what they're learning. We may have them during the Google Meet sessions explain things, um, do some journal entries and take a picture and send it in. Um, Google Classroom for second through eighth grade, there will be discussion board posts. Those are the things that are best practices for having students show what they know and what they understand. We don't want to put students in a position or a temptation to use the internet to complete online assignments and tests and quizzes. Um, we really want to be encouraging creativity and an authentic understanding of what they know and understand right now. And we are asking teachers not to feel pressure to grade something every day. Again, quality over quantity. If your student is a student who's identified with a disability, um, while the Department of Education has relieved us from the required minutes in the IEP and the accommodations, we are definitely working and thinking about these students who need additional resources. So our ESC teachers will be reaching out to provide you with additional resources. We're actually putting together care packages for these students, and we're going to be reaching out to you with times that you can come pick up additional resources um, to be using at home. They'll be working with classroom teachers to collaborate, to offer extra time and visual aids. At times, it may be appropriate for us to offer printed materials in place of things that are online. Um, and they will be keeping in close contact with our students and teachers and families.
If you have a student who's a speaker of another language and they get ELL accommodations at school, Mrs. Wessner and your child's teacher would be the person to communicate with. If your child's struggling with anything at home, um, we can use Google Translate for communication with parents if needed. We also do have a translator available that we can do a video chat with, and we'll be offering extra time for those students as well and visual aids as needed. So just communicate with us if your child is struggling in any way. We are going to ask students every day, Monday through Friday, to check in with us. And that's just to check to see how are you doing, what's going on in your house, what do you want to talk to us about. It's just a way for us to keep tabs on their social, emotional health and well-being during this time as we know really why we think standards and, and mastering things is so important. Really right now what's most important is making sure that our kids are healthy um, in many, many different ways. So there will be a daily check-in link that will be included in the daily checklist for K-1 in second through eighth in that e learning template, which is like a Google slideshow, there will be a page that, the, that is the daily checklist. So it will all be in one place together for you again. It will all be delivered daily. And that should be the first thing they do each day. Their teachers will be checking those. Um, the leadership team and our mental health team will be checking those just to kind of keep tabs on how everyone's doing. And parents, if we have any concerns about anything that's shared on that, we will be reaching out to you directly to, sh to share with you. What's next? Well, teachers who are very excited <laughs> to be contacting you will be starting to get in contact with you tomorrow. And they are working right now on um, getting information together for you for any username and passwords that you would need. And even if we think students know their username and passwords to any platform that we might use, we are putting them together for you all in one place. So they'll be getting that information to you this week. Um, their goals this week are for homeroom teachers to make a phone call just to say hi, just because we know our kids want to hear from us. And so they'll be working on making a phone call home to you um, to talk with your student this week. And then they will be working to do some practice Google Meetup times. So that's not for assignments or anything. Those are just things where they want to um, meet with everyone together, teach everyone how to use Google Meet and, and problem solve and troubleshoot that, try to remove any barriers um, that come up before our telelearning begins on March 30th. So we are planning some fun Facebook Live events. I did my first one last night and I read a story um, and it was so much fun. It was, I know I didn't get to see you, but just interacting and hearing from you um, brought tears to my eyes. It was just so good to see and hear from so many um, names of our kiddos um, who joined us last night. So those will be live on Facebook at seven o'clock every night this week. Um, we're trying to make them all live. There may be a few that are pre-recorded, but Miss Westner is going to read a story by Robert Munch. We're doing author study on Robert Munch, um, one of my favorite authors. He just writes the most silly, funny books. Um, and Miss Anderson's going to read, Miss Flood's going to read, and then I'm going to read one more story um, as well. So I encourage you to stay connected with us there. My goal is to also send out some ideas for home learning that you can be doing this week just for fun and things that are optional. Um, and so my goal is to get those things out to you this week as well. I am going to be bold and ask one thing. Um, I saw this post off to the side um, and it just says Monday starts a new chapter in public education. It's a big learning curve that students and teachers and parents will be navigating together. As we embark on this new thing called e-learning, I'm asking my Facebook friends to refrain from public scrutinizing their children's teacher schools districts for the way they are teaching or the lessons they are assigning. Please offer grace to your child's teacher and other school personnel. I promise that educating your children is still their number one priority. Um, we are navigating uncharted waters. We are doing something new. So we are here for you. I encourage you, if you are struggling, to reach out to your teacher, um, to reach out to one of the school leaders so that we can problem solve with you. Um, but I encourage you to 
to post positive things and give positive feedback to our team as well, um, because this is new for all of us and we will not be perfect. Um, but I do ask for your grace and patience and understanding. And I promise you that my team and I will offer the same, the same back to you. We know that there may be days where kids don't get to log in and that's okay. The learning that we have planned is called asynchronous learning. So the expectation is not that kids are on from nine to three every day. It is that we are delivering this, this, um, the expectations to you daily for what we want students to do at home, and you do them, and students do them when they can. It is preferable that they log in and do them every day um, because that's that's a great thing to keep a schedule and to do things that way. But we understand in the times that we're living in, and as things are changing quickly in our world right now, that that may not be reasonable. Um, so we ask that students try to log in every day and do their work, but the goal is end of the week completion. So we're trying to create this plan with a lot of patience and um, grace in mind and, and ask that you would do the same because we know that together um, we are better for sure. So that's all the information that I have for you right now. I know that there will be more things coming, but I wanted to get this information to you today to kind of give you an idea for what we're looking at. I know that you probably have a lot of questions after listening to that because it's a lot of information. So I would encourage you to watch the video again and see if maybe we answered the question. Um, if we didn't, your child's teacher will be reaching out and you can ask them any questions as well. Um, and we are hoping later this week to host a live Facebook chat for um, a Q&A time, questions and answers. So we love you. We miss you. School is too quiet. And we walk down the halls and and it's just kind of eerie because there's no nobody here. So um, we miss you, but we are looking forward to seeing you virtually this week. And there's nobody that we would rather be on this great adventure with than you. So thank you for watching and we love you and we'll see you soon.